Hey guys and welcome to this video. Today I wanted to talk about some problems about each big four agency in K-pop, SM, JYP, YG, and HYBE. Mind that these are just my own considerations and I simply want to give constructive criticism. In this video I will only talk about problems related to music, so please let's not start talking about scandals and controversies of each agency now because that stuff is heavy and I don't want to go off topic. This video is not intended to spread hate or initiate fan wars, these are just my observations and I'm a huge multi-stan, so please don't misunderstand my video. If you disagree it's fine, please respect my opinion and comment your own thoughts if you want. With this being said, let's start. To be honest many of my favorite groups are from SM Entertainment, or from their sub-labels, so I don't really have many complaints. My only problem with this agency is about its group's storyline and lore. I used to love all the Kwanga references and stuff because I thought it was a refreshing idea. But now, honestly, all this is slowly getting boring. I noticed that a lot of MVs and stage outfits started to look too similar and it's something I don't like, let's say it's a pet peeve of mine. For example, I think Sulji's debut was simply phenomenal, but her MV was nothing new. Done that, seen that, sorry. Even her stage outfits reminded me of some previous outfits from SM artists. It's kinda sad because at the beginning most SM artists had a very specific concept and MV style, but now they all blend together to fit the Kwanga aesthetic. I know it's not that deep, but I still wanted to share my observations with you guys, because I think MVs also play a fundamental role in K-pop, and now SM MVs all look pretty similar and have the same elements. I personally prefer when each group has their own MV style and lore because this allows them to have their own identity. It's very important for a K-pop group to have its own identity and aesthetic in my opinion. I can't deny the fact that SM has some of the best MVs in K-pop, they're so high quality and visually pleasing, but I still disagree with the choice of making Kwanga their main lore and aesthetic. Why do I keep getting attracted? Just so look I cannot it's the first problem with JYP is about their teasers. I can't stress this enough, but I hate JYP teasers so much. Teasers are supposed to tease fans, to give us something very small so that we can look forward to the actual thing. But JYP teasers are basically spoilers of the chorus, dance etc, and it's so annoying. I haven't watched a JYP teaser in years because I prefer to keep the surprise element and to discover the song when it's fully released. I've seen many other people talk about this matter, so I know a lot of K-pop stans can agree. The second problem about most JYP groups is the huge amount of comebacks and music. Yes, we are here for the music, and yes we all want our favorite groups to be active, but hear me out. I personally think most JYP groups have too frequent comebacks, to the point that when they announce a comeback my first thoughts are didn't they have a comeback last month, or again. Instead of having a positive reaction such as OMG I missed them so much or finally, I always feel like the comeback was unexpected or too early, almost as if it was unnecessary. Don't misunderstand me, I always eat up the songs because JYP genuinely has amazing music, but I feel like these groups should wait a little more to have a comeback. I'm not saying that they should pull a YG and forget that they're supposed to make music, we'll talk about it later, but maybe they should find a middle ground between having a comeback every two months and forgetting that they are musicians. To make an example, I feel like TWICE and ITZY are always having a comeback and making new music, Korean comebacks, Japanese songs, English releases and so on. I love their music but sometimes it's too much because I wasn't exactly missing them and I feel like there was no reason for them to drop new music, if you know what I mean. Maybe it's just me, but I think K-pop groups should let marinate their comeback before immediately having another one. Their fans should be given the time to properly enjoy the promotion period, to listen to the album, eventually save money to buy the albums and so on. Where you be Now that we've talked about how JYP artists have way too many comebacks, let's talk about YG artists which sometimes don't even feel like musicians. This whole strategy of giving their groups a few comebacks to make fans anticipate the music is not working because if a group that I stan is not active enough, then I'll focus on another group and so on. I will not just stand there waiting for a YG group to make a comeback because other groups can fill their space perfectly fine, no offense. The fact they have too little music also means that the majority of YG music ages like milk. In my opinion YG music is awesome and super cool, but it's way too outdated by now. You will never catch me listening to Love Scenario by Icon or Solo by Jenny these days because these songs belong to the 
past, and I've already listened to them to the point I find them super boring now. I don't know if it's just me but having a very short discography is pretty disadvantageous. These artists have songs that bore the shit out of me, since they're so old and I've listened to them enough in the past. I think that a K-pop group should at least have two comebacks, minimum, per year, because that's a reasonable amount of songs and it can lead to a decent amount of promotion period, performances etc. It's so sad to see YG artists always perform the same songs, I feel like they're bored as well. Another problem I have with YG is that their b-sides aren't very impactful. Yes, most Blackpink songs are amazing, a few treasure songs went viral and Icon has some pretty strong b-sides, but honestly, this is not enough for me to ULT YG artists. If a group rarely has a comeback, I'm expecting a mini album or album with zero skips and every b-side should be high quality. But most of the time I find myself enjoying only two or maximum three b-sides and that's it, pretty disappointing for my standards. I often feel like the albums were not worth the wait and that I was expecting way too much. If YG wants to keep using this strategy so much, they should at least live up to fans' expectations, don't you think? My third and last problem with YG is kind of hard to explain, but I'll try my best. Many of you guys will probably disagree, but that's fine as long as we keep a respectful tone. Anyway, I don't like the fact that most songs from YG artists can fit perfectly another YG group. I mean, most YG. Artists' comebacks are really good and everything, but the thing is that I can picture other YG groups having that song as a comeback and it feel right too. This is because I think YG has this specific style as a whole agency, but their groups don't really have something that differentiate them from one to another, they don't have a true concept or aesthetic that only that group can do. For example, Hello by Treasure could easily be a winner comeback, and it would fit them as well. But You by Icon could easily pass as a winner or treasure song. I can picture how you like that by Blackpink being a treasure or icon song, and the list goes on. I never feel like that a YG song sounds like a specific group, if you know what I mean. To make another example, I often see people saying stuff like only NCT can sing boss, other groups will never do it justice, but I never thought such a thing for YG artists, their songs can easily be covered by other YG artists. As I said for SM storyline, YG songs kind of fit the same vibes and aesthetic and they could easily be passed to every single group. This isn't a problem honestly because I like YG music a lot and I don't really mind them having the same vibes, but it's more of an op- <laughs>